Arizona's 1954 Innovator of the Year, and I've welcomed Lon on quickly. Okay, Lon? You'll be surprised. It's worth it. <laughs> Innovate a new technology. Here we go. Uh, I was asked to come out today and talk about uh, my personal experiences on innovation in great detail and do it all in seven minutes. So that's going to be innovative in itself. Um, don't sweat it, we're going to get to lunch on time. I'm not one of those sorbet things, I think I'm a vinaigrette. <laughs> I'm just stalling while we get our technology out here. A couple of years ago, um, I would, made the transformation from an engineer uh, to an innovator, uh, then from an innovator to an entrepreneur, and then eventually from an entrepreneur to uh, president and CEO of SAFCO International. Let me tell you, most of those were painful changes, but I wouldn't trade them for anything in the world. Uh, if there's only one message that I can give you all today is, is that you too can be an innovator. Uh, recognize that there's a problem, search for an answer, and then you're rich, if it was that easy. Uh, a gentleman posed a question to me uh, several years ago. They said, what if you took computer technology and paired it with the physically disabled. Not a bad idea. So I called Apple and Cupertino, and I called IBM and Boca Raton and Thomas Watson in New York and uh, Timex Sinclair and Osborne, if any of those dinosaur names ring any bells to you out there. It means you've been in the industry way too long. And I asked them about technology for the disabled, and basically everybody said, geez, what a terrific idea, but nobody had any technology for the disabled. So being the entrepreneur and the innovator that I was, I developed it. Um, innovate. Let's go to the next screen. We're going to keep this really brief so we can all go to lunch. Um, disabled people in America. That was the first question. Are there any disabled people in America? I heard that there were. I could personally attest that I've seen about six of them, once in a Kmart, I think, and a couple of times in my church. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that there's uh, right now in America, uh, there's 252 million people currently in America. Um, there's 5.4 million disabled people in America that need help every single day. That means getting out of bed, getting dressed, um, and in most cases not going to work, not going to school, but just sitting there until it's time to go back to bed. Uh, persons with severe work disabilities, that means the people that have good human resources. We were talking a moment ago about uh, capital resources. Uh, no, that's better. Thank you. There's 12 million people that would like to work but can't because of some kind of a physical disability. Uh, and then we also have mobility and self-care. That means that they need help and they can't get around on their own. There's 13.2 million. <coughs> Can we switch to the next slide? So what we wanted to do was is to get the disabled people back into the workforce. Formidable task. If you think about a quadriplegic who is essentially paralyzed from the neck down, how do they get back into the workforce? Well, my suggestion was is using a computer, but how does somebody without arms access a computer system or somebody completely paralyzed access a computer or any physical disability for that matter? So we developed ways of accessing computer technology. This thing here is called a head mouse. It's a system that you wear on your head. You move your head from side to side, up and down. The cursor follows your position of your head. I know there's engineers out there, so I'm going to tell you it uses uh, ultrasonic triangulation, if that means anything to you. Kind of works the same way as the focus on a camcorder. And you can control a computer just by puffing on that little tube that's in front of the mouth there, and that activates the mouse button. That means that we can take quadriplegics, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, or any person, even with the most severe physical disability, and get them back into school, get them back into the workforce. But that's not the total solution. Uh, next slide, please. Picture's a little bit washed out, but the center joystick there has been removed. Most of you recognize it as a joystick that kids use or a lot of adults use for running a flight simulator and other kinds of games on computers. What we needed to do is to make a product that not only worked, but was very efficient and inexpensive to produce. So we worked with Gravis. We pulled the joystick out, threw it away, 
put a hollow tube and a uh, pressure switch inside of it, and we invented something called a puff stick. So that mounts on a little platform in front of the computer. Somebody who's running an electronic wheelchair simply moves right up to it, puts their mouth on it, and they're controlling the computer by puffing and by moving their lips. Next slide. That wasn't all of the picture. The next thing we needed to do is once someone gets in front of a computer, what can they do? So we developed this piece of hardware. It's called a server. Uh, it's a piece of hardware that will plug into any standard computer. It allows the person to access 256 lamps and appliances on and off, uh, adjusting an electronic hospital bed, answering and dialing a telephone, uh, which means that, that they can hold jobs such as a receptionist, uh, uh, anything that involves telecommunications, computer-aided design. Let's go to the next one, please. And that wasn't a complete picture either. What we also realized is that by definition, severely disabled people or any disabled people can't use computers, and they haven't used computers, which meant that we were working with a market. Uh, we had a product that essentially was unsellable because computer technology generally is too difficult to use, and by definition, every one of our customers was a first-time computer user. So back in 1988, we developed a system. This is copyrighted. You're seeing lots of companies using our system now, like uh, Sony and uh, a lot of PDA technology is going to this. This is our operating system. This is our human interface. If you wanted to make a telephone call, guess what picture you would click on? It's rhetorical. <laughs> telephone, that's right. And if you wanted to change the light, you would click on the light. Uh, you wanted to control infrared media, that means TVs, VCRs. Uh, satellite dish antennas, any model, any manufacturer in the world, just click on it and the disabled person is controlling it. Let's go to the next screen, please. This is just a sample of what the environmental looks like. It's a sample bedroom. If you wanted to uh, control the lamp on the table, you simply move your head, you look at the lamp, you puff on that little tube, the lamp gets selected, you click on, off, dim, or whatever you, whatever you ask it to do, and it controls up to 256 lamps and appliances in any one home. Anybody here have more than 256 lamps or appliances? <laughs> I want your address. Let's go to the next screen, please. This is Skip. He's a kid that we were working with here, and uh, I wanted to put up a couple of practical examples. Uh, 14 years old, the delivery truck backs up over him on a, while he was riding his bicycle, crushed his head, his back. He became a quadriplegic and severely physically uh, disabled as well as mentally disabled. Uh, five years of re uh, rehabilitation. Get ready for this, $2.1 million they spent rehabilitating this one child. And basically he couldn't complete his high school, couldn't even communicate. But by using voice synthesizing technology, the input devices that you've seen here, last year he graduated high school. Next slide, please. This is one of our favorite clients. Uh, this is Liz Jimenez. Uh, just like us, a couple of years ago, she woke up, she had the flu, um, except when she went to the doctor, she didn't have the flu. It turned out that it was multiple sclerosis. Uh, within a few years, she was in a wheelchair. Within a few years after that, she was completely paralyzed from the neck down. Uh, pretty much given up her will to live. Uh, pretty difficult life. Uh, we gave her the computer system a couple of years ago. Uh, just so that you know, she is completely paralyzed, but she types 28 words a minute. She just completed her seventh chapter of her life story. She can answer the telephone faster than anybody in this room, and I defy you to call her to try it. And she does all of the accounting, both for her church and for her home. And uh, to conclude here, I'd like to take the pleasure of uh, uh, introducing the person who actually has been running this entire computer slideshow. Liz Menez, can you come out here, please? Let me introduce you. That's beautiful. God, you did a great job. Thank you. Here, stay. stay here. Stay here. I want to thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Beautiful job. Lon, thank you so much. That was excellent. Let me give you a Sure, for that. I just had to show you. I just when Lon called, and we just met him this week. It's just <laughs> wonderful. You. Congratulations. Just Hi, excellent. You. Thank you very much. Appreciate you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll all start at uh, what is it? Uh, One thirty-five, and uh, be back here for Mr. Drucker. Have a good lunch. Thank you.